Benefits of faith, having faith in uncertain times. So today I'm going to give you five benefits of having faith in God. The Bible says, without faith, we cannot please God. And I'm pretty sure that you wanna please God and I know that I wanna please God as well. So let's find out how faith can benefit us in the natural as well as in the spiritual. So if you wanna know what the benefits of faith are, then keep watching. Hello everyone, and welcome to Rosemary's Heart. I hope that you're having a wonderful day today because this is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Nicole, and as a believer, my mission is to inspire other believers to develop an intimate relationship with God by building up their faith through the Word of God, empowering them to live their lives as overcomers and victorious through Christ Jesus. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, then I would like to officially welcome you to the Rosemary's Heart community. Now today I'm going to give you five benefits of faith so that you can start trusting God in all circumstances. Okay, so let's get into the video. So I'm going to give you a list of what I think are five benefits of faith. And of course, there are definitely more, but these are the five that I'm going to focus on today. And I'm not gonna give them to you in any particular order. Okay, so number one is salvation. Ephesians 2, verse eight to nine. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. John 1 verse 12 But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Because of your faith, you believe that when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, you are saved. It's actually nothing tangible that you can touch, but you believe it in your heart. As a result, you are now a child of God and you receive all the benefits of a child of God according to the Bible. But most importantly, you have eternal life. Number two, it helps you to remain strong. Isaiah 41 verse 10, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Joshua 1 verse 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When you put your faith in God, you know and believe that he will never leave you. He told us in his word, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. God obviously knew that those are feelings that we would have throughout our lives, but we don't have to give in because he is with us and he is our God. When those feelings of discouragement come from the enemy, if you have your faith fully in God, you can tell him to leave and he has to leave. The word of God says, resist the devil and he shall flee, but he will flee because we are submitted to God and we put our faith and our trust fully in him. It is so empowering to use the word of God against Satan because there is nothing that he can do to override it. Some of you may think that this is crazy, but my favorite thing to say to Satan is shut up and leave because I know when there's a thought in my mind that comes from him and I refuse to accept it or entertain it. I don't entertain his thoughts anymore. And I say his thoughts because they are not my own. I refuse to own them. I remember when I used to dwell on negative thoughts that would come into my mind and it would affect my mood throughout the day. And it would cause me to be weak in my faith because I was listening to the enemy. I don't do that anymore. It doesn't matter where I am. If any negative thoughts come into my mind, I immediately shut it down and I tell the enemy to shut up and leave. 
If I'm in public, obviously I'm not gonna yell it out loud. I'll say it under my breath, but I make sure that I do say it. He has to hear me tell him to shut up and leave. Saying it in my mind doesn't work because the enemy cannot read my mind. He has to hear it out loud. Number three, it gets us to act. James 2 verse 14 to 16. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say, goodbye and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? 2 Peter 1 verse 5 to 8. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and your moral excellence with knowledge and your knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. The more you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in God requires action. When you put your faith in God, you are required to move. I've given this example many times before. Let's say that you need a job and you prayed and now you're believing that God is going to help you to find a job. But the problem is you're not actually looking for one. That means that you are expecting God to provide you with a job when you're not doing your part of actually actively looking for one. That doesn't work. If you truly need a job, then you're going to do your part, like sending out your resume, filling out applications, and calling companies to see if they're hiring. Then at that point, you can say, okay, Lord, I've done my part with sending out my resume, filling out applications. Please have someone call me so that we can set up an interview. Then when someone calls you for the interview, your part is still not done because you need to prepare for that interview. You can't just go in there thinking, well, God provided me with this interview, so I'm going to automatically get the job. You have to do your part in doing your preparation work for the interview. Once you prepare and you go into the interview, once it's done, then you can ask God for favor that you would get the job. But you can see through the entire process of praying, believing, and having faith, you still had a part to play in it. Number four, it moves God to act. Mark 9 verse 23, what do you mean if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. Matthew 15 verse 28, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great, your request is granted, and her daughter was instantly healed. Our faith moves God to act on our behalf. In Matthew 15 verse 28, you can see that the woman's faith is what moved Jesus to heal her daughter. Jesus said to her, your faith is great and your request has been granted. That was the same situation with the centurion in Matthew chapter 8. The centurion's servant was sick and he went to Jesus and he told Jesus that he didn't even have to come to his house to heal him. All he had to do was speak the word. He understood the authority that Jesus had and Jesus healed his servant as a result of his faith. So what are you believing God for? He hasn't changed. All you need is to have faith in him. Number five. It encourages others. Your steadfast faith in God can be your testimony. How amazing it would be for others to see the strength that you have because of your faith in God. And as a result, they give their lives to the Lord. As you hold on to your faith in God and not waver, others will see what you have and they will want it too. Because they'll be wondering, why is it that you're not fearful? Why are you so joyful when everyone else is sad? They'll wonder where is that joy and that peace coming from? And they will want it too. In Romans 2, it says the goodness of God leads to repentance. That means when others see how good God is in your life, they'll repent and want God to be part of their life as well. 
that alone should be enough reason for us to continue to put our faith in God so that we can be an example to others. I pray that this was encouraging for you and that you now know some of the benefits of putting your faith in God, but that you also realize that you are required to put action to your faith. If you know someone that would be interested in this video or someone that may be struggling with their faith, then share this video with them. If you want more videos that will help to build your faith and help you to develop an intimate relationship with God, then subscribe to the Rosemary Hearts YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit that bell because I will be releasing new videos every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you like this video, then hit that like button. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions about spiritual growth that you would like me to answer. If you came across this video and you're not a believer, or perhaps you were a believer and you strayed away from God, and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, then say this prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. I turn my back on sin and I repent and I trust in you. I confess that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I accept by faith the free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, then congratulations, you are saved. Welcome to the family of God. I will give you the advice that my pastor gave to us. Pray every day. Prayer is talking to your heavenly father. Read your Bible daily. Find a Bible-believing church and attend. And last, tell someone that you are saved. Okay, so let's pray. Ephesians 1, verse 17 to 19. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they may know you better. I pray that the eyes of their heart may be enlightened in order that they may know the hope to which you have called them, the riches of your glorious inheritance in the saints, and your incomparably great power for us who believe. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye for now, and God bless. Hello everyone, and welcome to Rosemary's Heart. My goal is to provide you with resources that will help you to develop an intimate relationship with the Lord. You can check out my free resources in the description box below to get my How to Pray the Scriptures guide, How to Study the Bible ebook, and the Identity in Christ toolkit. My mission is to inspire other believers to develop an intimate relationship with God by building up their faith through the Word of God empowering them to live their lives as overcomers and victorious through Christ Jesus. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and God bless.